we were making pretty good money at that time 10k a month and i was making like five six k a month from publishing and it was just like um, which gets you a lot more than people realize yeah. Yo guys, how's it going? Today I probably have some of the most like awesome human beings that I've ever met. If I didn't meet these people, I would not have a sick audiobook. Yeah, that's you true. know, they cool. built a six-figure business running around the world doing epic stuff, epic love stories. That's gonna be on another podcast with maybe me, you, mm -hmm. and Laura. They'll be very interesting. Oh fuck yeah. But mm -hmm. I think, like I said, I mean I've known you guys for a little bit over a year now. Yeah. We met at a gym. It was like pretty cool. You guys are taller than I expected. Hey, listen, listen. We didn't just randomly meet there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was You're not, just that like was, waiting. That, that, was not, <laughs> that was not random one bit. What happened? Uh, so we talked about when we met Nirvana for the first yeah. time. I mean, that's why we went to Nirvana because, because we knew you, you and Gavin and Darko and Ario were all working out there. Again, see. I haven't told you about this. Oh, man. <laughs> it's oh going we're going to get into that. So, let's get into all okay. that. So it's a, it's actually very interesting. From over about a year ago, we've had this Trojan horse plan the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, this Trojan horse to infiltrate uh, the Freedom Fighter gang. Freedom Fighter gang. You guys gang. are in deep, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, because because <laughs> we're like we like what you you guys got going on. You, Gavin, Darko, uh, just all those guys. Um, and we just want to be a part of it. So we we Trojan horse our way. We yeah. Trojan horse you, and we've done it again. We've done it twice now to a two success rate. We're really fucking good at it. Yeah, like we just make a course. Go that in, you take the make... women, and then you just like yeah, 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 get out. No, no. Rest goes like let's go in. Like, we need to make a course in that. We need to make a course. Yeah. And what it means is like how do you get close to someone? Yeah. That like you want to sort of have a business connection with or, or whatever. Yeah. But you guys did it so good. Like seriously, That's every time and time again, everyone like slides in my DMs and like, oh hey, I was going like, oh you want to hang out? Or I remember I seriously, I was running on the beach one day in Changu, right? Mm -hmm. okay. And I was like running, I was running, I was running. This guy stops me. He was like, hey man, are you Mike Vestile? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, I was going, like, you know, I moved by because of you. Uh, do you want to hang out? And I remember I was literally just like, no. <laughs> like, I just just kidding. Kidding. No. <laughs> no, no, no. And then he was just like, oh, that, that's cool. Well, you know, like. We've had the exact same thing now. People DM us, they're like, we're in Bali. Uh, let's hang out. And I have zero reason yeah. to hang out with you. I'm busy. I'm really fucking busy. And it's yeah. not to sound like an asshole, right? It's, no, like, it's exactly. literally, if, if you open up yourself to everyone else, then, you know, it, 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 it just takes from you, right? Yeah. Um, and then you can't serve like everyone else, like for example, like your audience on a yeah. higher level because now you have to, you have all these like hundreds of people DMing you like, oh, like I want because you definitely yeah. should hang out with them. You yeah. should like you check their time. YouTube channel. Instagram, yeah. love. <clears throat> um, you guys are like amazing human beings, so everyone just wants to like hang out with you guys, but it's like, there's only so much energy you could give out before yeah. it's taking away from like your tribe, your close people, you yeah. know? I, and it's also like people don't, un, it's like people, they can't put yourself, themselves in your shoes. Yeah. Like, like we don't even have the time to do the things we want to do. Never mind now how to do things for other people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So like, that's what uh, it is. Like we've done things for you. Why? This is gonna sound so bad, but I'm a tough person. I just say how I honestly feel. Like, why? Give me. I need a reason. Yeah. I need a reason to hang out with you, not just because you want to. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah. So what we but did that, for you. So, but we did understand. You guys that, were savages. Everything was planned out. Every like we knew exactly what we were doing. Yeah. The very first thing we did. Remember we sent that video to you. We were out in Denmark. I was like, oh, hey, what's up, Mike? We want to read your book. We you noticed that you don't have to. Yeah. yeah that <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Actually, Dude, maybe we like uh, check out that video. Did you send that yeah, on yeah, Instagram yeah. or was that it's on unlisted YouTube? YouTube? It's, it's on, on YouTube. YouTube. It, it is? Yeah, yeah. We can check it out. It's not even unlisted. Okay, yeah. we, we just that was our you, you, you were saying something and then, and then while you say something, I'll yeah. pull it up. That was our audition for the Mental Amelia's TV show, which I want to ask you, like, where we'll is that? that? We'll get there. We'll okay, get there. But, but the entire process, what was... You totally butchered our name. Um... I'm yeah, butchering so. all the words. <laughs> Mark Millionaires. I'm just okay. trying not to press the A S D right now. Um, uh, okay, okay, you got it. Okay, you were saying? Uh, I was saying, yeah, the, the whole thing was cal calculated. So we're this video. And we'll, we'll be teaching this in our course. Yeah, in our yeah. course. We said this, we're like, yo, my want to buy your book, but we, you, know, you don't have an audiobook. Like, what do you do? You're totally fucking up. You could be making so much more money. So, like, can we make our audiobook for you? And for you, it was like, yeah, of course. Like, why not? Like, mm -hmm. free opportunity to. Like that's just us providing value up front. Yeah. That's the big one. That's what just I just do something and like make it next level, make it noticeable, not like 
I'll write a little thing. I don't know, but like create a whole audiobook for you, which for us cost like eight hundred dollars. Yeah, which was oh totally worth it in oh, every he way. He said a thousand. Uh, yeah, it was it was like nine hundred. Okay, it wasn't was nine hundred. <laughs> but yeah, just doing that up front, and then you uh, like noticed it, yeah. and then you kind of, it's kind of like now you feel like you owe something. And not like that's just how it is, and uh, and then for that reason you kind of would talk to us, but you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, I honestly like you guys did it so freaking amazing, and I, I can't be so grateful for you guys because, you know, on your end, you know, you're providing value, but on my end, you guys are just like generally amazing human beings. Mm-hmm. You know, like seriously, I, I see you guys like we're traveling around the world, um, we have like epic parties and stories that no one really knows about that's why we're like kind of like doing this long form mm-hmm. content mm-hmm. but from you guys going from strangers to you know people coming into the tribe to even like just close friends and now we're hanging out you guys are in this like makeshift airbnb like studio that we created yes, you guys understand like these guys understand what it actually means to give value and i mean mm-hmm. ever since yeah. day one you didn't actually ask or take anything from return i remember mm-hmm. the moment you guys started doing that and you guys like got on our radar. I didn't even see you guys as like people that watch videos, but like family that I just didn't even know. Right. Uh-huh. Um, that was the goal all along. Never, ever feel like we were ever in it to yeah, get yeah. anything. But you guys didn't really ask for anything. And then literally for me and then Gavin and Ario and then Aaron, and we just wanted to like bring you guys in. We want to no. just serve you guys or in any way, or even like this, like I don't even really see what we can do with this, but I mean, from this, maybe this helps like build your brand. I'm I don't sure really want I'm, anything I'm, from yeah. it, right? Um, but it's just like so cool what happens. Like, I think that's like a biggest secret in life is mm-hmm. people don't know that if you actually give with no intention of mm-hmm. ever receiving, that's like the biggest cheat code. Yeah. 100%. I have a really good lesson on that. Like, when yeah. we started a YouTube channel over uh, maybe like last April, so it's been like a year and three oh, months. Yeah. Not- yeah, like okay. our focus was just providing YouTube videos about publishing. And holding absolutely nothing back. We had no intention of making a course or anything. So like, I'll just say fucking everything we knew. And we just kept it making videos every other day this for was, six months. This was different than every other YouTube channel. Every other YouTube channel, they put out a video and then they're withholding yeah. that big piece. Yeah. The missing piece. Or they got an affiliate link. Or they're selling something. Or they're promoting something else. Mm-hmm. Uh, it took us six months. We had never planned on making anything or trying to get money in any way. Our focus is just... Let's just provide as much value as possible. And I know in the end it's going to work. Mm-hmm. And I'm still like that now. Um, so until until people on our channel finally start asking us to make a course. Like, like begging so us. So many times asking. I was like, I really had no intentions of it. And then like, I guess we I guess we really should do what they want. So let's do it now. But yeah, the first 85 YouTube videos we made, I mean, didn't make a single penny from it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I feel like when people try and start a YouTube channel or a podcast. Video one, they're like yeah. selling some like, they're they're like, like, ebook or something. I see if they're like four, five, six... 15 videos in then and then like they haven't taken off or blown up or whatever then they're like oh, mm-hmm. fuck this. should i do something else you just have to keep fucking doing it and it's such like, a short-term mindset everyone yeah has. yeah i've seen some of our other friends start a youtube channel as well um and they are trying to sell something way too quick mm. like yeah. and people don't even know who they are they don't trust you mm-hmm. you basically have to build that it just provides so much freaking value and yeah i guess if even if we hadn't created that course people asked for it I would just still keep on making videos uh, for free and providing value until, like, until something happened. You know, it's it's amazing that shift that you guys had because you know it's like you had the Kindle publishing business, then you got in the training business, and then mm-hmm. even with like a thousand subscribers, you pulled like what forty grand in the first yeah. day of launch. Yeah, exactly. 51. So fifty one. Yes. Yeah, lead into that to show you that yeah, that actually works. It's all about value, like value, value, value. I mean, I'm just being honest. I have never seen anyone make that much money in one day from such a tiny following. Yeah. So we had 1,200 subscribers, Mm -hmm. and then day one when we launched of our 997 course, we had 50% off, which is fucking insane. Mm -hmm. But we made 98 sales, Mm -hmm. 98 sales from 1,200 subscribers. Almost 10% of people gave two random guys on the internet $500. And, course. and we, we did a survey afterwards asking why, why did they buy the course? And so many people said... No, uh, no, no. Not so many. Every single person. Like they, they, all 28 or 30 They people. either said, uh, your free content was so good that I knew this was going to be like super epic. Mm-hmm. Or uh, I built my publishing business with your free content and I just owed it to you guys. Mm-hmm. And that was the two reasons that everyone bought the course for. Yeah. 
Dude, it's so weird because like everyone has that initial mindset of like, I want to withhold. I want to withhold. It's like that scarcity mindset. It's such bullshit. Dude, it was like, I remember back in the day um, with like the internet marketing stuff is you never wanted to give away like your cash down. And then you almost have all these people when they're like doing these screen shares or tutorials, they almost look like constipated, right? <laughs> and they're like, who the hell is this guy, right? Uh-huh. And then I was like looking at your guys' videos and if you guys ever want... I, someone DM me is like, what do you think about online publishing or e-publishing or whatever? Like these guys are probably the foremost biggest experts. I wouldn't have like this audio book at by 17 Steve by Steve, Steve Stanzel. No, I seriously wouldn't ever. have this. And then can we play the sample so people can yeah. hear how good a narrator we got for your audio book? Someone once told me the definition of hell. It's that on the last day you have on earth. The person you became will meet the person you could have become. Done. The question is, who is the person you will face when you're... That's actually the real Mike Vasile. Pure oh, insanity. That's the real yeah, Vasile. no, I'm actually Steve Zanzel. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Okay. That's crazy. I actually got this on Fiverr for like five bucks. Just that cover? Yeah, this entire cover. Huh. No, you got the ebook cover. Yeah, the, the, this the one e-book. I made. Oh, yeah, right. oh, yeah you I made this. You made this. Yeah, 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 I got this. Oh, yeah. no, this ebook. That yeah, one. dude. Mm-hmm. And um, it's can, good. Can, can we please check the audiobook sales? Oh, wait, I don't. I don't. I don't know the password. It's just your Amazon, it's just your Amazon password. You don't. Know yeah, I think like, I have. Shop, I have right? a separate. I have a separate one. We we do know the episode with that. But like okay. seriously, because yeah. like I just want you guys to know the entire situation leading up to this, to uh, you guys becoming strangers, to hmm. you dating one of my best friends, to like coming in and just like taking over Bali, having a good time is it all started off with value, you know? It's like you came in, you're like, okay, how can I provide value? How can I provide value? And then now you guys are, I mean, let's actually bring it back to before that because since you had that mindset, of course you didn't start off like Kindle publishing, selling eBooks, making six figures plus Mm -hmm. a month or a year, six figures? A year. You guys go six figures? Yeah, but you guys are going to scale to six (laughs) figures a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But But it never really happened like that. You literally like a year before that, you were just... I think in New Jersey. What was yeah, that? Yeah, like? yeah. Oh, okay. I would love to start from the beginning. I want to say real just, quick. The thing about the Provide Valley thing, there's so many different instances in our life. And I want you to tell the one about the the Facebook group when we were publishing. Oh, Because yeah, that was yeah. you already. Just naturally being that way. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't just planned. Give, it's, give just, about, it's just who we are. I I feel like it's something that can't be taught. That, yeah. That's why it's, it's... It's just who you are. Like, you yeah. are generally not a shitty human being. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You just Thank generally you. care with all of your heart. I genuinely you do. you have nice hair. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Dude, I'm walking around town in Pula, and people literally yell at me, I love your hair. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Yesterday. You're oh, like, what about... You're like, hey, we're Fuck twins, man. What about my hair? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> as I was saying... All right, let me just start from the beginning. Yeah. And we'll get into what the point Rasa was bringing up. So... Uh, before the entire entrepreneurship thing, uh, we were the entrepreneurship as a whole. You'll agree is it's just a massive transformational thing of mm-hmm. your life because mm-hmm. before, yeah, literally just had no self confidence, no self esteem, no direction, no anything. Um, I mean, I was at I was also at a point where like I was never like massively depressed, but um, confidence. Uh, it goes, it stems in every part of your life. Like, I used to think that, like, I'll literally never, ever find a girl who, who will ever want to be with me because I'm so low value. Yeah. I used to think that about myself. Yeah. Genuinely. Oh, I yeah. I literally could not conceive a girl <laughs> wanting to sleep in my bed with me every night. Yeah. Um, like, why the fuck would they pick me over, like, every, like... And you had the same thing, too? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I guess because we're together... I mean, this is a we've never talked about. I mean, you don't, you don't tell those things to other people. Yeah. Not even to each other. But, uh, I mean, yeah, being that, we're, like, we're identical, we're, like, identical, we're identical twins, of course, but we're also, like, we're so similar, so, like, living in the exact same DNA, you guys share the same, like, zygote, you know? Same zygote, yeah. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, we both went through that and thought those things. So, but there was just a a point where I kind of bottomed out, just, like, I was just sitting at home, watching Netflix all day, smoking weed all day, putting on weight, literally doing nothing, uh... And what flipped the switch for me, I was simply, I, I just looked in the mirror at one point, I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck have I become? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. what is this shit? This is pathetic. Yeah. This is, I was 19. Yeah. yeah, like, this is fucking pathetic. Yeah. So then, I was living at Denmark at that point, then eventually we flew to New Jersey, and then me and Rasta basically had a meeting, yeah. a twin meeting, basically like, 
what like this we can't this is yeah. not what we want clearly right yeah. and it was it was almost like a not one day to the next but within a week everything changed in terms of just got super motivated and we didn't know where to put our motivation to begin with uh, like we didn't know about online business entrepreneurship had zero idea that that shit existed so we just we put it into school college so we put it into college so we enrolled in community college while living at home and we're just like we're just super motivated like literally from that ridiculous amounts of motivation we put it into school and uh, first semester we got perfect 4.0 GPAs with both of us uh, honestly, honestly beforehand we were kind of telling people at least our parents and friends like Oh yeah, I'm gonna get a four hundred GPA. Like it's different. I'm different now. It, mm-hmm. Things are changing, and uh, I remember my dad in particular. He, I remember. I love him. He's amazing. But just there was a dude, certain night. There was a certain night where he was like, "Guys, it's like, why? Like, no, you guys just watch TV all day. Why would that happen? Like, be realistic, please, guys. Just don't. I don't want you guys to be disappointed." Mm. And then me and Chris were just like, "No." He was right. basically saying, "Oh, you guys are ridiculous for thinking that you're, you're you'll different. You'll do That's that." That's so messed up. Like, yeah. he, like. Parents, you know, know. and there's people out there. He didn't realize what he was actually saying. No, no, but like, that's how how most parents are, you know, it's like, like, I remember there was this uh, one saying, or there was this one girl that I met and she was like saying that she wanted to sing and I was like, why, why don't you sing? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And she was like, well, my dad said that I have a voice that's everybody, like everybody else. Like, why would you tell I know, like, I know. a child that, I know. You know, I'm very passionate about that as yeah. well. Like, like it, I, I can't wait to be a parent and just th- like that. You could nine months away if you really I start could now. Be, but uh, that's <laughs> like, in our longer. dad's case, he just wanted the best for us. That's yeah, what he yeah. thought was the best. Like, I just want to make that clear. What he um, was trying to say was, guys, you have to develop work, work ethic, yeah. discipline, focus to be able to do what you guys are saying. Mm-hmm. And he was saying, you guys obviously aren't that. You've never shown that before, which so is you so can't. fair to think. So I've been like so lazy my whole life. And all parents do that though, because that's just how they were treated and then it's also like mindset wise like culture you know and then most times it's also coming from a place of love right it is it's yeah. not because you want to make us feel like shit no but in the end it did they just thought that's what was best but it also motivated us yeah um so basically our, our mom just kind of is yeah she's just like yeah you guys can do it like good job but uh our dad our friends because we were always just seen as like the the, the retarded guys the way we kind of fucked around and didn't really have much to offer mm-hmm. they're all they're, so they would say the same thing we couldn't do it so semester one both 4.0 GPAs uh, and l- let me say going in we also were like C- can we actually fucking do it I don't know the goal was like straight B's yeah because that was that was like that wouldn't be good enough and then we got 4.0's first semester then we were like fuck holy then shit then second semester like, we, we can't do it. anything we yeah. put them on yeah. here and then the second semester the goal was 4.0 in every class except for anatomy because yeah. that was supposed to be the hardest course in the entire college So that one will sell for a B. So that's the new goal But second semester we both got 4.0s mm-hmm. and everything yeah. and then third semester that at that point We had so much confidence. Yeah, we had so much so much confidence <clears throat> So we're taking anatomy 2 which was gonna be the next hardest class uh, third semester perfect 4.0s Yeah, so I had three semesters <clears throat> and uh, Can I just finish real quick? <laughs> They're like, like telepathically, yeah. like, all right, you say that, I say this, you say that, I say this. Mike, you chill. Yeah. All right, Mike, Mike, you, you both listen. chill. Yeah, click both you. Click both your A like. and your S's in the corner. <laughs> all right, go. Uh, so after three semesters, like 60 classes in total, the worst grade we got in between us, I'm not saying this to show off or anything, but there's a lesson in the end. Uh, the worst grade we had between us was a perfect day through three semesters. Um, and then we ended up dropping out in the fourth semester, but I'll, I'll get there. But the big takeaway from that, um, I'm I'm not the biggest fan of the current uh, education system. I, I don't think you learn things that are particularly uh, applicable mm-hmm. in life. Uh, but that one and a half year span, we both learned one of the biggest lessons ever, which was if you dedicate yourself 100, and I mean 100 percent to something, like you can have whatever you want. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. Everyone was saying you can't do it. Yeah. But still. And it was something that seemed inconceivable to us. Yeah, it's just school grades. Mm-hmm. But it meant a, a lot to us at the time because we truly gave it 100%. We had zero social life. Mm-hmm. We had zero anything else. Mm-hmm. Like, we were, like we were just studying every day. Mm-hmm. Studying every single day at work, delivering Chinese food between deliveries, sit there and make notes. We had sickening amounts of like note obsession. Mm-hmm. So we would, every anatomy test, we would print out notes. I would like it wasn't even like a 4.0 was challenging yeah, yeah. the 4.0 was a, a walk in the park because yeah. we put in so much work for it Look, I mean that's because the way we broke it down is 
really we all it was was memorization. System. No, it was just memorization. That's really all it was. It was memorized everything. Yeah, like, the only cup, test, memorization I've... is just like uh, it's all about just repetition. Hmm. So if you just repeat enough, that's why if I say, "Oh, I'm gonna fail this," well, you just didn't. You didn't. We literally you, you go read into like, notes enough. The hardest final exam of the year. Fill it out in like ten minutes, then leave. Yeah. Simply because we went through the notes fifty times over the past week, literally ten times every day. So it was just stuck in our minds. Memorize it like it was, a script. And then like once the uh, the exam was over, I just forgot about the things. Yeah. So like, I totally gamed the system. Mm, yeah. But it was so fucking easy. Oh, yeah, I have none of the knowledge. We were so obsessed with achieving those four points. And then how did it transition from taking and channeling that yes. energy into entrepreneurship? Yes. Enough about school. So then stay in school, guys. You know, <laughs> uh, then it, it was June. 2016, it was the summer between our third and fourth semester. Yeah. Uh, this was community college, it's only a two year. Uh, so we're, we were gonna graduate after the fourth semester. Mm -hmm. And um, basically in that summer, we had so much confidence, like our confidence has gotten to the point where we were thinking we're better than school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like school is not good enough for us. Mm -hmm. So then we were just like, then we just started doing some research online and we just figured out about this online business thing. And we were just super intrigued by it. So we did like a few, maybe a week of research, just looking around. And then you see other people's results. They're, they're fucking murdering it online, making hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then we suddenly got extremely interested in that. Uh, and that's where I found publishing. Rasmus actually got started in dropshipping. He didn't start in publishing until later. Um, so I'll get into that. But our parents, they wanted to stay in school. We were one semester away from graduating with perfect GPAs at mm -hmm. college. Um, so we, we were already done with school in our heads, like no more of this. Uh, and basically we dropped out without telling our parents because yeah. they were not going to be okay with that at all. Like well, we were idiots. Of course they were saying, guys, just finish is one more semester. And just I finish it them. and that's it. Like it totally makes sense what they're saying. But in my head, I knew I was not going to use that degree for anything. So like, I don't even care. And even actually, if I did get the degree, it would be like a, a safety blanket that I don't want to have. Mm -hmm. Why would right? you spend time on a B plan if yeah. it's your, or your plan B? So here's really what it was. There was school and then we started an online business. So my uh, school, I, I hated. It cost money and, uh, and it was taking time away from what I loved, which was my online business and was making me money. There was just none of it that made sense. Yeah. So why would I continue doing that? So we just went all in on our online businesses. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we stayed enrolled in one class so that to give the facade to our parents that we were still going to class. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, like, we were home a lot. And then our mom just would always ask us, guys, well, don't you have class and shit? I was like, mom, it's all online now. We're just doing hella online classes. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Mom, we're lit over here. We're still, we yeah, still yeah, have yeah. the 4.0s, don't worry. We'll finish school. Um, but, of course, that can only hold up for, like, a, a month. I think maybe a month yeah. before they kind of, like, caught on. And then when our dad found out about it, I remember he said... Um, in the end, he was like, oh, we do what you need to do. But he said, no matter what happens, because we, we were telling him at this point what we're going to do with online business. Yeah. So he had said that no matter what happens after this with online business or whatever you guys do, I will never, ever, ever think this was the right decision. I'll never agree with your out. decision. Yeah, I will out. never agree that this was the right decision to drop out. Mm -hmm. Now, if you talk to him, yeah. uh, he'll probably deny that he said look, that. Look, look, I but love it. That he's the biggest supporter of us. Yeah, now he, biggest supporter. Yes, now he is. Like, I business. hate to say anything, that, but that's just the little things. I'm just that, here to tell the truth of what yeah. happened. It's like everything, right? Like, I remember I told my dad, um, I was like, I think in college as well, I was like, hey, dad, I don't think I'm going to finish college. And my dad was like, don't you ever say that and just hung up the phone. Uh -huh. Or my mom would exactly like cry because situation. I didn't have like a degree and she like literally like mm. I felt like right. I was disappointing my mom from an Asian family, right? It's Especially. horrible, right? It, yeah. It's horrible. So I can only imagine like what you guys felt because at the end of the day, like this is the stuff that no one talks about. Everyone thinks it's just like, oh, you start this online business and you succeed and everyone loves you. Exactly. And no, never, no, never, no, no, no one no. ever hated you. But like seriously, going no. against your parents is best wish. It's not easy. It's hard, man. I'll, say, I'll say it, have it's have each other. I was gonna say it's not easy for one person, but together, like we're just a team. Just like got it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> then it's like, fuck. Okay, we're just gonna do this together. Then it's yeah. like we have a someone to back you up the whole time. Exactly. We just then have... it honestly makes it not so hard. That's why we've always been a little rebellious. And it's not been that hard to be that way because we do it. No, we together, have, right? We just little twin meetings. are like, Rasa, don't twin listen. meetings. <laughs> like, like, don't listen to what the fuck they're saying. Don't listen to what they're saying. Like, it's not true. Like, it's I, know, I know, I know, I know. And it's like, okay, because you get inside your head. But when you have 
your twin telling you the same thing. Like, it's not true. It's not true. Like, mm-hmm. I got you. Are uh, these conversations, like, verbally or, like, verbal. telepathically? No, these are verbal. Yeah. These are you're just, like, look at him and you're just, like, yeah. twin meeting. The telepathic conversations are about different things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, what was, like, the progression, then, with your online business? Because you yes. were... Let's get into the fun stuff. Yeah, let's look yeah. with that. Yeah, so, like I said, I got into publishing. It was the first online business I've ever gotten into. Uh, it's not the only one, but it's the one I started with. Uh, I So, I, I quickly explain what publishing is. It's... Again, I'm not going to go talk about how great it is yet, at least. <laughs> Maybe another video. Maybe another video. Yeah, we're here um, for a month. We're here in like Croatia in this uh, random city for... It's like the 10th biggest city in Croatia, so it means it's like really small. There's 70,000... Yeah, it's, it's tiny. 7-0-0-0-0 zero, 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 zero people in this place. It's tiny. So yeah. we're going to be... Which is like a college. Yeah, we're basically Literally. like... A, yeah. We're yeah. like at a college right now. It's like college for entrepreneurship. Yeah. But it's you're, saying, you're saying? It's sick. So uh, publishing, what it is, it is where you... You publish books, you put it in ebook format, print book format, and audio book format. And uh, we hire ghostwriters, professional cover designers, professional narrators. So we don't actually do any of the, the work, work ourselves. We just kind of manage the business, put all these pieces together, uh, and then publish books. You publish them once, and they'll make money this month, the next month, the month after, if you know how to market it and all that stuff. But that's publishing in a 20 second It's like drop shipping stories. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It's, except it's like a digital business and you don't have inventory, yeah. which mm. is one of the best parts about it. But now we have written books ourselves. Yes, we have written books a, ourselves. A few. But, yeah, but uh, 98 percent uh, of our books that are written that's by others. Not scalable. And, and what was like the progression? Like, so you had that one class. You know, your mom and dad were like, oh, "Okay, online class." Like, and, and technically, you guys were learning, but like, it was yeah, yeah, a yeah. different type of learning. Yeah. So well, we were at our computers all day. So it and yeah. Like so we what were. was like? What was like the twelve month like change, for example, from yes. getting inspired mm-hmm. to then, you know, traveling around the world? Yes. I want to say real quick. In, in our fourth semester, we were actually enrolled, but we and then we got F's in all classes because we took we did take we had one class. class. We had one class. I thought we had an online class too. Regardless, that one class was was an F. So yeah, well, yeah, we yeah. failed that class <laughs> because at that point we come into class, we'd look around, be like, "You guys are all idiots. You guys are just <laughs> victims of the system. You have no idea what you're doing here." I was, Things changed very I was, quickly. I was, I was like, "I still want to keep my 4.0 so I can say I dropped out with a 4.0, which I guess technically we got an F in the last. Uh, so we I dropped out with 4.0. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so got into publishing. I published my first book in August 2016. Uh, beginning things were certain. Struggled massively out of the gate. Again, anyone getting started into online business should expect that. Mm-hmm. You don't have massive success to begin with. Published a few books. I wish I had screenshots to pull up. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. to Because I have spreadsheets of how much I made from every income stream every month and things like that. Um, but in the beginning, published five books. And a few months, they were, they were doing, doing all right, making me a few hundred bucks a month. And then eventually... I met this guy on Upwork as I was looking for a writer. Long story short, he scammed me for over three thousand dollars, which was all the money I had, which I wanted to invest. Almost all the money. Well, yeah, I had like four k, five k, and he took over three k. Um, and he was supposed to create a bunch of books for me. Uh, ended up nine uh, PayPal's ninety day plan. After ninety days, uh, you can't off. get a refund. So he he basically just strung me along for ninety days. After ninety days, he fucked off, and. So that was like a big waste of time. I didn't work on my business because I thought someone else was kind of building it for me, which is a valuable lesson in itself. Like that was the stupidest shortcut mm-hmm. I was trying to take ever. But after that, I lost a bunch of money and I kind of took a few weeks to regroup. Be like, fuck, it was brutal. It was really embarrassing as well. Yeah. It was so embarrassing. To so my especially family, if you have four grand and you lose three. You yeah, know, that's yeah. Like- it was brutal. And then also my Parents, imagine that. Like, we get into online business. The first thing I get scammed for three thousand dollars right out of the gate. It's just I told you guys. Yeah, it was that's what it would have been if we had told them. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't tell them. I didn't tell them until next year that I actually uh, yeah. got scammed there. Um, but what had happened during the, those three months? I published those books back in August and September, October, November. I didn't publish anything. They still made me three, four hundred dollars every month. I hadn't touched them since August. They were making me that money, and at that point, I was like, whoa, that's fucking insane. Like, I know I just got scammed, but this still works. Yeah, so I, I got a good feel for the for the business model, and then in December, I got this other course, and then I went 100% in on that, and from there, things scaled every single month for all of 2018. No, all of 2017, sorry. And then I, I hit my first 10K month in December, 
of that year. So I skilled. So it took you 12 months to then hit to yes. 10 grand in a month. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was with very poor guidance. Now we, it's been proven you could go to 20 K in like six months. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you, if you know what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was how I got started in publishing. So all I was doing the whole year was just publishing, mm -hmm. living at home, publishing, 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 publishing. And what, now I want to tell my side of things cause I was also working really hard in that time. I think I was actually working harder than you on a different project, mm -hmm. which was my drop streaming business. So yeah, in the beginning, we like kind of researched like different ways to make money online. We assembled like a list, mm -hmm. and then in the end, we both decided we were like, okay, let's do two different ones. Let's split test. We can split test businesses here, Man, and then which everyone twin is so unfair. unfair, dude. It's unfair. I say it. Uh, it's one. Of, it's one of big unfair, or it's one of. It's definitely the biggest unfair advantage that we have. So then we would both do two different online businesses, and whichever one went better, the other one would hop on and mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. Use publishing, added drop shipping. Um, so yeah, we started at the same time. I was building my drop shipping business. Like you've obviously know all about it. A lot of fucking work, especially when I had no idea what I was doing. I did buy a course, um, but I was just working so hard. Customer support, answering emails, returns. Duh, 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 duh. It was You're so much high ticket, shit. high ticket products. Yeah, it was mm. like two thousand dollar shit, um, and it was really, it was like really stressful for me. Um, and then in January of that year, Christian was publishing, and it was he was doing like okay. So like. Fuck it. Let I me think I made like a thousand bucks a month in a thousand in January. And then I told Rasses, Rasses like, uh, we talk every day. He knows what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I just don't like Rasses. Publishing is pretty sick. Like I can see it's going, it's going to do well. So I said, Rasses, just publish a book like yeah. here. So I, then I showed him and he published his first book. You take it from there in yeah. January. Yeah. Real quick. I was working my ass, on, ass off on the dropshipping business and there was like no freedom involved at all. I basically had a nine to five job. At the very least I could do it from home, but still it was so much work. But I was like, okay, this is what it takes. Um, and w which it is what it takes. Um, and then in January, I published my first book. One that I wrote myself. I, I'll tell exactly what it was. It was a simple CrossFit workouts book. Wrote it myself. It was super easy. It is a sick cover. Is, is it, it possible? Is there a screen we could put it on? Uh, yeah, bro. What, what's it called? It's not on Amazon anymore. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, published it. And then the first month, it made $855, that book that I just wrote. And then put up. I was like, holy shit. That's as much as I'm making from my dropshipping business, working my ass off. And then I published three more books after that. And a month after, I made $2,000. And then I was like, oh, okay, this is nice. But I really got to focus on the dropshipping business. Because there was a lot of potential in it. Like, there were moments where I was like, okay, fuck. I'm I gonna, thought you I'm were onto the better thing at yeah, one point. Yeah, like, fuck, I'm going to hit it. Because it was one day. Um, I'm not allowed to say what I was selling, but I really want to. But technically, due to the contract, when I sold the business, I'm not allowed to. But I sold, like, three units that cost 2000 bucks each. So it's like 6,000 6, sales in one day. Kept like 1,000 myself. I was like, fuck, I just made $1,000 today. <laughs> oh my God, I just gotta keep doing this and scale, scale, scale. Um, but it, with Drawstream and e-commerce, right. it's, it's like, just like this. Yeah. yeah. One Constantly. month you'll make 2K, next month you'll lose $500. Yeah. Even though you worked your ass off the whole time. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I published four books in total in the beginning. And I did not publish a book for seven more months until after I sold, sold a Drawstream business. But each month they made like 2,000. 1,800, 1,500, 1,600, 1,300, 1,600. And I never even fucking touched the books. Yeah. While I was working my ass off, ass off on the dropshipping business, making 1,000 this month, losing 300 the next month, making 1,500 this month, making 200, you're, losing 500 again. Your books that you weren't touching were making you more money than dropshipping. Yeah, so after six, seven months, I was like, okay, this is like, I'm smart here. This doesn't make any sense. I should sell the business so I can just publish full time. Clearly, it's a much better. I was way. scaling at that point. I was yeah. way ahead of. Yeah, life. and here Christian was making like six, seven grand a month, and I was working on my fucking dropshipping business, making freaking losing five hundred dollars a month. I was like, God damn it! And then I did manage to sell the business um, in August two thousand seventeen for seventeen thousand dollars, which was sick. Because in the end, I, I did profit. It was a pretty good store. And then after that, I went full time in on publishing the way Christian had done six months earlier. And then, and then we were the publishing twins. And then we were the publishing twins. Yeah, then mm. we were just publishing our asses off, our yeah. tits off, I should yeah. say. And that, when I sold the business, that's when we, um, that's when we moved out from from home. We were just living home the whole time, and we moved to Chiang Mai, first yes. time moving out from home. Yes, that was September two thousand seventeen. Uh -huh. Yeah, we moved out home to Chiang Mai. Uh, in the beginning, we were like teasing, we're teasing our parents with the idea of it. Like, mom, we're we're moving to Thailand. We're moving to Thailand, and they're always like, they're the whole time they're just like, yeah, okay. Okay, kids. Sure Real okay. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> bye bye. You go do that. Anyway, that was just fucking annoying of them. But uh, and then in the end, we actually did do it. And they're like, "Whoa, fuck! They're actually doing it." Uh, 
September, we moved to Chiang Mai. Again, was just publishing the whole time. Um, you li- yeah, you lived in Were Chiang Mai. Were you there when I was there? Uh, so September, September to December 2017. I don't remember. This was a while ago. Maybe 2016? Yeah. I, think I think you were before us. Um, but yeah, we got, we got a pretty, a pretty sick pad there. Not gonna lie. I just sold my business for 17,000. You were making like six, seven grand a month. We were feeling pretty good. Oh. And in Chiang Mai, you could get a it's sick dirt place. cheap, man. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we 1,500 bucks a month. It was 50, 50,000 baht. 50,000 baht. Which 50 million baht. No, that's rupiah. Yeah. 50,000 baht. baht. Yep. Yeah, I remember people around us like, Whoa, that's so expensive. Cause <laughs> everyone else was living for like 200, $200 a month. And then ours was 1,500. Um, Admittedly, we should not. We should have gotten a cheaper place, but I just fucking wanted we to that. Show that we were balling. Exactly. I honestly had to like prove to people that what we were doing was like actually making money. Yeah. Um, so that's really why we got it. And yeah, we spent three months there just working on our publishing businesses. Okay. All right. Shall we continue the journey? Yeah. Things things get interesting. Yeah. yeah tell me, bro. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> um, yours. So September to December, we were in Chiang Mai, and December was when I hit my first 10k month of publishing, which is a big milestone. Um, and funny enough. I have to backtrack a little bit, but we were at, when we were still at home, this whole time, me and Rastus were like, publishing is great, but uh, we know eventually we have to set ourselves up for the next thing. It's not gonna make me a millionaire. It's not gonna make me a millionaire, yeah. but that's what we wanted. And we, what we thought we should do, and I still agree this is what people should do, is start a YouTube channel. So if you wanted the same things we wanted. Yeah, if you wanted, yeah, this whole online business thing. And we were at home, like Rastus started a YouTube channel. Every day we tell each other, we gotta start a YouTube channel. But we'd always make excuses like once we get to Chiang Mai, we'll be out of the house. Our parents won't have to watch us film YouTube videos. We'll be living for ourselves. Then we'll start making YouTube videos. Uh, and then we moved to Chiang Mai. We just never did it. Long story short, never happened. Yeah, long story short, it never happened because we were so fucking scared of it. Mm. It was so scary. At this point, we were still little awkward, socially anxious mm-hmm. twins. Mm-hmm. So, um, and... We just, we never did it. Every day, we have to make first YouTube video. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you know what? First one, to make it easy, we'll do a Chiang Mai apartment tour video. Yeah. But I just couldn't stand listening to my voice yeah. on camera, so we never uploaded it. I have the video on my phone. <laughs> never uploaded it, though. Yeah. And so that went by, and then we're, then our next excuse was, okay, after Chiang Mai, we're actually gonna move to Hawaii, and we're gonna move in there with our one of our best friends who's super uh, outgoing, Social just has a lot. You met Max. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Met him uh, he, was so, he was pretty awkward when he said hi to you. I'll admit it's that. Okay, like, hey, man, I'm Max. Was hey, man. <laughs> yeah, no, but he's super outgoging and literally gives zero shits what anyone thinks. He about gave him. me like a side hug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds like him. Uh, so then our next excuse was, okay, we'll we'll live with Max. We'll gain social confidence from him. He'll like he could talk on video. He'll help us make our first video, and then we'll start making YouTube videos. And Matt, then, yeah, I want to say about the idea of moving to Hawaii. We were sitting in Chiang Mai, like, okay, well, what do we do next? Our visa expires. We got to go somewhere else. Um, and then my thought pattern was just like, we were making pretty good money at that time, 10K a month. And I was making like five, six K a month from publishing. And it was just like- um, Which gets you a lot more than people realize. Yeah, yeah. When it's only yourself, you have no one else that you have to pay for. Yeah. Um, we basically like, where of all the places in the world, where do I want to live? Anywhere, anywhere in the fucking world, where do I want to live? And for me, that was Hawaii. It's like, fuck it, let's go to Hawaii. Yeah. I'm like, okay, let's go to Hawaii. Yeah. And then we did in January after we went home for Christmas. Yeah. Um, and then we just continued publishing. We were supposed to start the YouTube channel, but we never mustered the balls to actually do that. There's so a new just, excuse every single day. Yeah, so we just published, published, published. Income grew. Amazing. Making more than 10K. Uh, things were looking great. But then eventually, the exact day, I think was March 23rd or something like that, I lost my personal publishing account. It got terminated. Done. What happened? Uh, so it got terminated because I had, I was creating, again, I'm completely open about this. I was doing some things that I'm not proud of. Uh, this could create a long story in itself. But I had an idea. Oh, uh, the English market is only one market. There's a bunch of foreign markets. What if I make a Spanish book? And then for like, okay, let me just, you know, I don't want to invest in translator. Let me just take this one book, throw on Google Translate, and then publish it mm-hmm. as a Spanish book. I'll just translate the cover, things like that, and then publish it. So it was just like a test run to see if anything would happen. I published it, that Spanish book that was Google translated. And you Google translated the, an entire, entire book. book. What? Entire book. <laughs> entire book. How Holy fucked up is that? Yeah, how fucked up is that? Yeah, how, how many like 
things can. I don't know. Pull up Google. It Translate. wasn't actually Google Translate. It was a different one. Okay, because I'm like the same which, fucking thing. Which, I was gonna say I put it on Google I Translate. Know, I was it, like, you put an entire <laughs> book into that. <laughs> it was called like online doc translator. Okay, okay. Or some shit like that. Yeah. Uh, again, what, this what is something these? I'm not proud of at all, but yeah. I've changed so much since then that I don't mind talking about it because it's not me anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay, but at that point, we're all just. We all just want to make money. Yeah, here's just an opportunity that you saw to make money. This was not when I was making 10K. This was before that, yeah. where I first tried it out. Um, put out one. The Spanish book did like over 100 bucks a month. Like, okay, it cost me zero to make. I have the content already. I just translated it, got a new cover made, and it was making 100 bucks a month. I have like 30 other books, and there's like a bunch of other languages. Hmm. Okay. okay, so I just took this first one, and I tried it with French. Try it with German, try it with Italian, and they're like, and okay, Portuguese, that's and just Portuguese. And, and Portuguese. Yeah. Like, this is super fucked up. Uh, then, <laughs> admit it, super fucked up. Um, and then I, I created these five versions of the same book, and that was just an extra $500 in added income for free. At that point, like, I wanted to make fucking money. I was like, fuck. Like, I knew I should not do this. Are you kidding? I knew I should not do this. I'll, I'll say real quick translate your books is. Great to do. Oh, if you a, hire a professional translator. It's an amazing idea. Yeah. We, it's a, I've even told people to do it. Very it's valuable. Because people buy it and then it's just like... Yeah. Dude, it's these markets that have... Nothing. No competition. There is fucking no one with Italian books about learning how to lose weight with keto diet. Mm-hmm. There's none. Yeah. You put out one, you don't even need to market it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I didn't have to market it. And it would make... It would make ebook sales. It would make paperback sales. I never put it into audiobook form because then I, That would... I, and the narrator would be like, what the fuck is this garbage? <laughs> yeah. I'm not narrating this. But they were making like 20 paperback sales a month, people buying these shit books. Mm-hmm. Um, and I eventually, I was like, fuck. I just got greedy. I got greedy and I did it with more of my books. Mm-hmm. And then I had a portfolio of like 50 shit books, but they were making me like an extra 2, 3K a month passively. It didn't cost me any money to invest in it. And, uh, that can only go on for so long. That like that's super, super, super shitty. That's not a business. Mm-hmm. That's a scam. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then eventually, I would get these notifications from Amazon, like some low, co- low content, no poor quality control notices, being like you got a bunch of reports on this book being shit. And I, I eventually got that on like I don't know ten different books, and eventually they terminated my account for that. Mm-hmm. I take 100% responsibility for that. Mm-hmm. Like, that was so fucking my fault. Like, I knew it was going to end. Mm-hmm. Like, that is not sustainable. Um, I was just a fucking idiot. But you're not, expecting, you're not expecting to lose your account. No, I wasn't. I just thought, like, I would just continue making money scamming people with my shitty books. Yeah. That's basically what I thought. Yeah. Um, but eventually, I'm, I'm really happy they terminated it. So, it got terminated in March. Like... Instantly, I remember where I was. I was walking home from the gym with no shirt on, my drawstring bag, uh, back to our apartment in Hawaii, and I just, just checked my emails, and I got termination notice in my email. And instantly, like my world changed. Instantly, I lost. I mean, yeah, you had over your, like, ten thousand dollars a month in income like that. I didn't have income anymore. I actually did for my audiobooks, but that's when things got interesting there. Uh, but I suddenly, I, I was like, I can't afford to live in Hawaii. I thought I had to move back home. I thought I had to start over with everything. After I thought I was the fucking man. Mm-hmm. I thought I was killing it. Um, and then eventually, just stressing out hard for like a week. Like super desperate mode. And then that is what triggered us to start the YouTube channel. Yeah. No, we like were putting... A, a moment of extreme desperation. Like I, We eventually agreed, like we're not moving home. Yeah. We're not telling our parents about this. We just put in a do or die situation where we had no choice. Either it was overcome your fucking fears being on camera and start the YouTube channel like you want to. Or move back home. Or you have to move back home and tell everyone that you mm. failed and it didn't work. Yeah. That like that that was as like literally do or die, that was as bad as dying. Is yeah. having to go home and admit defeat like that. Mm-hmm. It's like fuck that that, that it failed. And we, we wouldn't had, have gone back to a job but we would have started over. And that's the only reason we started the YouTube channel, because it was such a big fear and we I was just procrastinating, procrastinating, never doing it. I was like, fuck, we, we just have to. We have no other choice. And then and then we did. Um, and we made our first videos like, I don't know what kind of videos to make. I, I know a lot about publishing. No, 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 no. We knew it was going to be publishing videos. Oh, yeah. Like, what kind of publishing videos? I don't know. Let's just make tutorial videos about like the different steps in the publishing. Yeah. How to process. get a good book cover made. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how to, to find a ghostwriter. How to do keyword research. How to do keyword research. Things like this. So we just, August, no, April 13th was the first YouTube video we put out. It was like, how to get... Best-selling book covers made for $5 was the title of it. 
and if you watch it, it's like you'll see the people we wore back then. It, it's your your skin will crawl watching us speak on camera. Yeah, it's so bad. Should it's pulled up. Uh, I don't. I don't. Can can people see it? Oh yeah, definitely yeah. Could. Okay, yeah, we can do that. After we see this, for sure. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> but um, maybe we should just like have another one where we're just looking at all the old videos. All the dude. old. Shit. We just like react to it because like, oh man, some of my old ones are so cringy. Some mm-hmm. of my other friends' ones are so cringy. Then you know what's crazy? Like in the future, when we look back at these videos, we're like, man, what were they thinking? I know. I'm in sure. that Airbnb in Croatia, yeah, like, what's sure. going on? All right, what's up? What's up, everybody? Oh, oh, oh. So here it is. I think these are some of the ones that I saw. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's got hella views. Yeah, dude. Nice. Fiverr. Oh. Um, so I, I would save <laughs> this cover. Audio quality boy. Oh, um, damn. This cover. And these are just good looking covers that sell well. So they. So that's not the best depiction to show you how yeah. uh, but you should, and uncomfortable we were. Yeah, but like if you guys see their YouTube channel now, like you guys are hilarious, right? Like, like now we're pretty lit. Let's compare that to this one where you're... Oh, no. <laughs> 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 he said, Mike, this video is to, it's to you. We're talking to you. Yeah, I we're literally talking to you. Yes, we're twins. He said, you gotta be comfortable with this comfort. And that's why this is really fucking dangerous. Clip's coming spot in Hawaii. It's a 55-foot clip. I'm gonna show you that soon. I'll you. Oh, dude, this is the Rockets fight. I remember seeing this. I wanna say, look, right behind us, there's tombstones. Yeah. There's a yeah. Little, there's, yeah. A, there's literally plaques dedicated to people who died jumping from this. What are you doing, man? I wanted it. <laughs> I wanted it more than anything. So I'm a little scared right now, but we got the quad phone. screen, quad okay. screen, yeah. right. drone hey, flying. It's 55 feet to jump. In, like the dangerous part is the water. Mm-hmm. I think the, the rocks, dude. The rocks, the rocks are the dangerous. The rocks. <laughs> I just, if you see here, I was like six inches away from here. There's, the there's, there's also this hole right here. That sucks in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Spews out. How do you, you swim get, out? You just don't. You just. You have just to. That's why people die here. You actually had a triplet. This this was the triplet. Yeah. <laughs> this is the triplet, you guys. So we got GoPro, two camera, and look at how the water spits out. Oh man! It, it felt like a punch in the back of the head. People probably wonder like, why the fuck are you showing us that video? But I can totally explain it. No, man. That, yeah, but you like you guys should definitely check out their channel. Seriously, I think you guys have the best when it comes to like ebooks. But yeah. man, so there's no s- doubt about that. One hundred percent. And you guys are the most litest. Yeah. Um, there's no competition in publishing. But with anyway. that, with that being said, like you lost your ad accounts, you got a punch in the fucking mm-hmm. like stomach because that was your life. What did yeah. you do from there? What was like the switch? Mm-hmm. So then, um, with publishing, it split into. You publish ebooks and print books on Amazon. KDP on Amazon, and then yeah. you publish audiobooks to Audible. So I did not you lose my Audible account. I still had that. And then I had previously to losing, I had been uh, I had realized that my audiobook income was like neglected, yet it was making up a big chunk of my income. Interesting. I didn't really try much, and I just dedicated a few months. Like, okay, let's let's see if, what I could do to. Uh, uh, s- like specialize my publishing business towards audiobooks. Mm-hmm. Then I just focus on audiobooks, like te- split testing, what's the best length, what niches uh, work well for audio, like what kind of narrators do they want. So I put out like a bunch of audiobooks. These are not shit audiobooks. Like before, these were, these were high quality. And then basically my audiobook income went from like 2K to 7K to 12K. From two to twelve k in two months. It's like holy fuck, holy fuck. Yeah. But then the month before, I had lost my publishing account and um, audiobook income was still there. But we were that that point we were completely dedicated to going all in on YouTube. Like we're just all or nothing people. Mm-hmm. Like when we like something or we want to do something, we go hundred percent. So like okay, let's not publish. I know publishing is passive. So and I still have my audiobooks, which is making me shitload of money now. I don't need to work for the next year. I'll yeah. still make six figures. Like you couldn't publish. I could still publish, but I chose to not and then just go 100% on the YouTube channel. Yeah. 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 So I just didn't touch my audiobooks. They ended up making me 10, 12, at like 8K plus at least for the next eight months straight. Like and does that. it go down because of competition? Or yeah, yeah, so there will always be a natural decline. But it declined really well. Mm-hmm. It declined really well. It was over 5K every month for all of 2018. Yeah. Uh, so even just up till recently, uh, on that audiobook account, I'm making over 3K a month. Yeah. And that lasted all to the entire next year. Yeah, yeah. half of 2019. Yeah. Um, so 
that shows you the passiveness of it, which is pretty crazy. So I was living off of that, and that was plenty of money to live off of. Like, yeah, from the last time you ever published a book to, like, 12 months later, you had made, like, eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 yeah. just did from not doing anything with the books. Yeah. Yeah, well, most people are, like, hating their jobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, like, working 40 hours for that. So exactly. That's pretty passive. Um, so, and I was freaking out to begin with because I didn't think that audiobook income would be there. I didn't know it would explode like that. My income just exploded. I'm like, okay, I'm fine. I'll live off of that. So we went all in on YouTube and we just did every other day videos for the next five months straight. Didn't miss a single upload ever, every other day. It was all we did. You know how much goes into making YouTube videos. Yeah. Like a lot goes into it. You gotta plan it, film it, edit it. It was all a one man show, just us doing it. So, so two man show. Two man show, <laughs> sorry, two man show. You guys have like the biggest hack. It's like, it's that, so that's the course, thing. how to succeed in life. And then they buy the course, and they're like, "You just get a twin." <laughs> yeah, that's the course. <laughs> Duplicate your genes. Yeah. Um, so that's all we did. That was YouTube videos every single day was what we were working on, and eventually, like just from the beginning, we were just people liked our videos right from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So we quit after like a few months when we had a few hundred subscribers. Uh, by the way, publishing is a tiny is a tiny micro niche. We were getting like, like five subs a day. Five subs a day. Five subs a day. Like at a tiny channel. Yeah, like, but what, those 100? really wanted to know like, oh, yeah. Kindle Publishing. Each phone right? was valuable yeah, yeah, as yeah. fuck. Yeah. So, yeah. And um, our channel just very quickly became the fastest growing channel in publishing. Gaining 10 subs a day, it makes you the fastest growing channel in publishing. <laughs> yeah. Literally. So, um, I would just start introducing myself and say like, yeah, yeah, I'm the fastest growing we freaking channel in the publishing. What's your email? So there were other people making some videos, but it was just... It was also like the... videos that you make fun of. Yeah, like, it's like the know. tutorial ones, but it's like, there's no personality, right? There's no personality. That's it, what we had. Publishing, I think that's why I like you guys, because we, like, if you look at our, if you look at our timelines and our personalities and our channels, they're almost like the exact, we literally all have, I'm basically the third Mickelson twin. Essentially, you are. You are. I basically am. I'm the one that got sacrificed actually on this. Yeah, yes. you jumped. Your the, so there was the there top. was four. As you can see, each yeah. twin had one. Exactly. We lost one here. So you now drowned there. I yeah. drowned right there. So now it's just like us. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was like an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. He like would die, but then his duplicate would take in his really? memories. Can you imagine yeah, that? Yeah, that sounds sick. I've yeah. never heard of that one. Yeah, he's yeah. 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 That's the only Yeah, Arnold. definitely. It was that one. <laughs> um, but where were we? I literally have no idea. Oh no, it was your income was going down, then you oh, went okay. all into YouTube. We were, we were getting subscribers, and people mm-hmm. watched our videos, and they fell in love with our videos. Um, first of all, we had the best publishing content, bar none. Yeah. Not even close. Like, I had lots of experience now. I had results. I'd been doing it for a while. Mm-hmm. Like, and like we held nothing back. There was a translate. You guys book weren't shit. selling anything. No, selling absolutely nothing. Like there was a translate book stuff, but like. 80 percent of your income still came from the English yeah, ones, yeah, which were the translation shit was a was a small portion of it. But yeah. I was just so damn fucking greedy yeah. that I, I wanted, yeah. But anyway, uh, and then also we had we had personalities in terms of like being twins, and we just didn't really give a fuck. Like from the beginning, we always said when we get on YouTube, we want to just be ourselves. We yeah. want to be able to be ourselves so that when we meet someone in person, we don't have to act any differently. So one of the biggest compliments that that I think we always get is when someone meets us, they're like, you guys are exactly how you are in your videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we are, that is actually how we are. Mm-hmm. So, and we've heard that constantly. People yeah. have always said that. And then that's probably the second most common thing people say. The first thing is you guys are a lot taller than I thought you were. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. I was like, Everyone, damn. Yeah, like, I'm like, this is 6'2". Yeah. I'm it makes six, me want to like sit <laughs> up yeah. real quick, you know what I'm saying? For some reason, I'm actually we, sitting on a pillow yeah. right now. It's true. <laughs> true. Camera angles, people think we're like 5'8 or some shit. Yeah, yeah, especially like if you look at this. That angle is brutal. Really, this? I like how you're in the background just like... Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, publishing is the most boring topic you could ever talk about. Yeah. And that's what everyone else is just talking about, going like talking only about the publishing itself. Yeah. Which it, it is unlistenable or unwatchable those YouTube videos. So we had to make gonna fall asleep before you ever take action on anything you're talking about. I wanna show you a video we put out. This is a few This, this is my is favorite video. Uh, this is one of my favorite videos. Yeah this one. Yeah, yeah that was good. Um, so this is a video we put out last week. Shocking interview with two self publishers. Now Pro- Maybe pr- production quality has 10 next. They, this is fucking, this is all Dane. He, we're basically probably, uh, producing movies at this point. Very different. <laughs> we're gonna look at why one hey, look, let's make a full screen and let's watch the first minute. And the other one sucks ass. So without further ado, let's introduce our special guest today. We have Chad and Rasmus. 
You'll see, we make publishing fun. Yeah. And, and hey, my name's Chad. I'm 27 Chad, years old. Graduated from North Dakota University two years ago. Happy that the president. I've been publishing books for <laughs> about one year now. I have 12 books, making about $500 per month. And I really just want to scale my publishing business so I can get rich as fuck. Hey, my name's Rasmus. I'm 24 years old. I've been publishing for a little over one year. Last month, I made over $10,000 from my publishing business with just 12 books. I plan to continue growing my publishing business for the next year, then using that money to invest into bigger and better businesses so that I can retire in my 30s. And then so basically, we, what this video is, is just... Uh, buy my shit! No, <laughs> it, it's uh, two... Publishers being interviewed, me being a super retarded publisher who doesn't know what he's doing. Well, I've been publishing, but I, uh, I kind of we point out all the flaws of a bad yeah. publisher versus a good publisher. Yeah, I mean, she asks questions and then both answer in our own way. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Man. Um, people fucking love this video. But yeah, like it's it's we didn't say anything revolutionary. It was like the same old things we always say. We mm -hmm. just did it in a different way. People fucking love this video. It's also my favorite video that we've ever done, and I definitely want to do more like kind of publishing skits. skits. Skits are fun to make. Yeah. Um, Yes. And then from there, uh, so you tried Trail the Wrong World, you saw this, we met at a gym, and then what kind of like happened in Bali, because I, I, I didn't see what was going on for mine, because I was also very like deep in the grind, mm -hmm. but what was that like when you ended up going from Hawaii to Bali, because yeah. you were in Hawaii, that was like your base, and then you just like got up and left and moved to Bali, mm -hmm. that was yeah. obviously an entire shift, what kind of like led up to that? Yeah, so we were a few places in between, like Denmark, where yeah. we're also from. New Jersey a little bit, did a little small travels, but that was that was basically the ship from Hawaii to Bali, yeah. and we moved there because because there's a big, a massive community of I, there were a bunch of successful people there. You were there, Gavin was there, and Joel Brown was there. It was just a bunch of successful. There's this great community, people killing it uh, with entrepreneurship. So that's basically why we wanted to go there, mm -hmm. and also. One thing we were banking on for a long time was mentored by millionaires. Yeah. We were like so convinced, like, we're the best for this. Yeah. Like, there's yeah, no obviously. way we can't be in this. Mm -hmm. Like, we're twins. Like, this, we would, we're exactly what you'd be looking for. And what's really funny, at the exact same time, we're also being casted for an MTV reality TV show. Did we ever yeah. tell you that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we made, like, the finalists um, to come on this TV show. It's called Are You the One? It's like a dating TV show. For twins. It was for a, twins. It was an eight twins edition, full yeah. twins edition. And, and they uh, found us on Instagram. Yeah. They're like, yeah, guys, uh, we love your audition. Uh, we have selected for the final round. So we want to fly you out to LA and do in-person uh, auditions. We're like, fuck yeah. And um, and they're like, okay, well, let's, are we, our dates, this is this. We can do ASD, ASD. ASD. Yeah, we can. <laughs> uh, we can do this date and this date. Let's do it. And we just never got a response. So I guess they never got a response. To left on the red. Yeah, yeah. like that would have been so cool to have a mm. paid trip out to LA. Yeah. Um, fuck it, I'm... Yeah, no, we happy were like, we were like so excited for this, uh, the Mentor by Millionaires, a reality chief show, like so much messed up things happening because we were looking for the places, we were looking for the cast, we got everything, we had like so much submissions and then literally like that exact same time, the like Gary started like peeing blood. Oh uh, yeah. And then that entire thing uh, really messed up. I think it's yellow like Yellow so, fever? He got yellow fever, then cancer. Oh God. No, he got yellow fever, then dengue. Oh, dengue. Oh Shit. my God. Then cancer. Oh my! That's and then and then and then in between that he had uh what's called some some type of culosis like disease where your blood kind of just like bulges up or something. It, it was really messed it up. Sounds man. dangerous. And yeah. So for that time friend. being, uh, and he was like super stressed in the show. Like it was like so much moving parts, and he was like also in the middle of a launch that did I think like five million Ooh. in two weeks and. Ooh. Like launches are great, but the stress was like crazy. I was part of that launch, but then you got a good cut. Though. I was yeah, I got a good cut, but I was also sick for like a month after. Mm -hmm. You know that's why it's like launches are good, but like it's a lot of. Work. It just completely depleted you. And then not only that, but he also had a big event in Vegas in January, and then like I remember I was talking to him, and he was like so stressed. He was like, so we were talking. I was like, all right, man, maybe we should shelf this and we should focus on number one your health, and then focus on like the main thing because that was just like a fun idea. But I think we're still going to have that in the mix, mm -hmm. right? It's just, like, longer. I, that, that was a year where we tried biting off more than we could chew, you know? And that was, like, looking back, we were like, man, we we were just trying to do too much. And then the staff was very small. There was a lot of Indonesians, so mm -hmm. it was really just, like, 
Yeah. Yeah, man. I remember so, watching the villa hunting videos. Yeah. It was so fun. It was good, right? I, mean, it was so I was fun. like hopping out of like bird yeah. nests yeah. and yeah. something uh-huh. like that. Yeah. 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 To me, the idea is so sick. It's the you, sickest it, idea. It has ever. to happen. Yeah, oh no, for sure. Yeah. Like a house of entrepreneurs doing like battling with entrepreneurship things. So sick. Yeah, it's definitely going to be in the works. But until then, I mean, I think Bali has just kind of become that mm. show. It's just no one's recording. Like, how many yeah. awesome no, conversations have you been on? Even like, what it is. Yeah. But yeah. you supposed to but I, dude, I saw, decision. Dude, I saw, actually, I did. And I was like, uh, the vision of it was I would be like the Ryan Seacrest mm-hmm. of it. Where I'd be like, oh, hey, I'm you're, you're, the, you're yeah. the host. I was the host. So I didn't really have much decision. I was like there with the idea. I was in with all like the board meetings. We were mm-hmm. just like in Gary's room. And then <laughs> it was just like me, him, Rob, and then a bunch of like the other people and um, all the videographers and the editors and the producers. Mm-hmm. But then, at the end of the day, I was just gonna be just like the Ryan Seacrest face. Mm-hmm. Like, hey guys, let's go! Uh-huh. And then I, we had all these pl- we, had, we had all these plot lines. We're like, okay, we gotta invite like Your exes because there's actually there's actually a science when it comes to creating a reality TV show, right? Yeah, like, sure. you need to get the one instigator, the one sweetheart from you know North Dakota church girl that turns into a raging slut on season three. <laughs> you know, like we had like everything set up, right? But yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have known. God damn it. But a, twins, come on. But twins, you know, 100%. How could you? Uh, but that's so cool, man. Like, this all happened in the span of two, three years. From the way two beginning, years. two years, to where we have gotten to in the storytelling so far. Yeah. Yes, that, yeah, that's only two years. And let's kind of, like, bring it to that. Okay, so now we're in Bali. We're all met. We all hung out. We all got uh, food and dinner together. And what, what, what happened from there? Uh, can I backtrack real quick Let's so, backtrack, so, so we yeah. don't lose it? Just when it comes to uh, starting the, the YouTube channel. Remember how I said it was the biggest fear I ever had. Yeah. And then we did it. Like more than any online business money thing, starting that YouTube channel changed my life completely. More, more than, than money. More than ever anything did. else. Because beforehand, I was pretty low, low self-esteem. Yeah. Um, not very confident. Very self-conscious. Yeah. Um, and then start the YouTube channel at first it was really hard, but then people give you like, Oh, you guys are awesome. Thanks for the videos. It makes you feel really, really good. And then we got better and better and better. And now I'm so comfortable talking on camera. I'm just like comfortable in my own skin. He's like just spread eagles. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's just always spread. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, uh, but I wasn't like that before. So overcome my fear of speaking on camera for one, I overcame the biggest fear I ever had, which just smashed the limiting beliefs that like. I can overcome, if I could overcome that, I can overcome anything. I was do con- anything. I was convinced I could never, ever, ever in my entire life be normal on camera or mm-hmm. good on yeah. camera. I could only be awkward. Yeah. That's what I thought. But now, now I feel I'm very good and, and comfortable. So now, now I know like I can do anything. I literally have the capabilities to achieve anything that I want. Um, and then also the fact that becoming comfortable with that just made me like socially comfortable Confident, high self esteem in every area of my life, which I think everything in terms of like your quality of life or your happiness yeah. stems from like your confidence. If you have confidence, and you and you just feel good, like you're that's that's all you need, yeah. and that's what it did for me. It just and then now ever since then, I just and have the best life. Well, it's like so many like I, I, right? yeah, because it's like if you focus on one business model where the goal is to kind of keep it a secret, mm-hmm. then you also tend to keep your identity, your personality a secret, right? Um, you try it, like how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you shifted to the YouTube thing and then you started sharing and then mm-hmm. it was crazy. Like for example, you can make, I knew people that were making six figures, seven figures a month, but yet they were the shittiest human beings. Mm-hmm. Their family hated them. No one really wanted to talk to them. Uh, they were the most loneliest people in the world. They're most unhappiest people in the world. Um, but then you switch and then you go into a place of abundance and you just want to give and then it's life massive. just starts to get better. I mean, you know, both you guys ended up getting girlfriends. Mm-hmm. That um, would never have happened just like a year and a half ago. Yeah, fr- from the beginning of like what you were saying, like you didn't, you, like it was more of the am I enough? You're looking in the mirror like, why would a girl ever sleep mm-hmm. in my bed? How can I ever, like the reason why we want to make money is to just more love and connection, right? Mm-hmm. Be happy. And it's not necessarily the success that you gain because you have it. It's not necessarily because the passive income that you gain because you have it. Mm-hmm. It's the person that you've become throughout this entire journey. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. The, it's, it's, not the, it's not the external stuff. It's just how yeah. you feel about yourself. It's what confidence. you turn into. It's the confidence that you, and the comfort you can have. Just like, oh, I just, I just feel good about myself. Yeah. And it's not because of the things I have. I'm just accepting. I just feel comfortable. Uh-huh. You know? So that is what changed my life more than anything. Bar none, not even close. Yeah. Was overcoming the fears behind camera. 
Yeah. I think I think where we're going to now though, because now this is kind of like the next level, mm-hmm. is I think it's just gonna make us stronger. Like especially these long form contents, mm-hmm. because like for example, for ten minutes or twenty minutes, you could like fully be yourself, and then once the camera's off, you're like, okay, now I can like take a nap. I can relax. Mm-hmm. I don't have to put too much of my personality. Because when it comes to video, especially in stuff like that, you have to kind of overboard it a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes like, how's oh, yeah, going? Yeah. Sometimes you're not feeling it. it yes, yeah, so you have to like put it there. But yeah. when it comes to like long form content like podcasts Mm -hmm. like even video podcasts is gonna be still on youtube but like it'll be on other podcasts for like one two three hours we've been talking the shit like the the camera like stopped three times so we're literally at maybe i think an hour and a half people see your entire personality there's Mm -hmm. no hiding behind an hour or two conversation Mm -hmm. then at the end of the day it's like especially when we look at it we kind of see maybe any quirks that we have and then we just get better it's like that feedback loop right so imagine if we keep on doing this while we're in Croatia for the next 30 days, just talking this shit, bringing other people on, oh, yes. just being our real selves. Yes. Just imagine the people that we become after this. One of the best feelings ever, it goes back to what Rasa was saying, is just when you can be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's like And get paid for and it. And get paid for it. Like Joe Rogan makes like 20 to 50 million just being himself. It's sickening. It's disgusting. But being yourself just, it just feels so good because... A lot of people aren't themselves a lot of the time. I used to be that way. Like, mm-hmm. go into public and then just... I, you just couldn't be yourself. I, yeah. like, like, I'm not a psych, psychologist or a therapist to help people. But it's it's all in your head. But I'll say, we're not going to act like ourselves until we start, like, doing all the gay shit that we usually do in real life. We'll get there, though. Exactly. We'll get there. Yeah, exactly. The gay jokes and all the yeah. good stuff. So, there, there's still... We've withheld a yeah. little bit. Oh, yeah. Because mm-hmm. we, we actually a little professional. It's yeah. all. Right. No, it's not 100%. <laughs> yeah. But no, we like, get that too, but it's, it's all part of the personality. Like, when people watch this, you're like, okay, they're normal, real people. Yes. It's not the days where it's like, okay, you have to have a Lamborghini, a freaking mansion, like, like 17, half naked one behind you to become successful. You could become successful because you just, quite frankly, just like traveling with your girlfriend. You like traveling with each other. You like and you're just people. helping people. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Can I, oh, can I give a, uh, maybe we should save it for another time. I just want to give my one last. One piece of business advice that I think like a, every successful yeah. business stems from. So obviously you got you need a core structure in place. So if I were like to hold a mastermind and like teach people how to scale their businesses, I would tell everyone the exact same thing. That's yeah, so what we've done the last six months. Yeah. So now everything we do is based off of this. You might not believe it from what I was saying before, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, so to build a big business, the foundation is the best fucking product or service in in your entire niche, entire industry that you can possibly have. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. You wouldn't believe that with those shade translator books I created, but that's now how we operate now. So that has been a feedback loop for us. Every time we create that, it all stems back to that having the best fucking product or service. And then you go from there. Mm -hmm. Like you can't build a big empire on like shaky foundation, which is for us. What we thought was uh, our 1.0 publishing course. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was the best we could possibly make at the time. But we want to scale to six figures a month and get like tons of people in it. And we want to like make publishing mainstream. But we're like, that's shaky foundation. Like we were ready to scale quickly with ads and everything. But then we took a step back. And then the first course is made in one month. The second one has is taken six months to make. Mm-hmm. So now now two, we truly two guys working five hours a day in this course. For yeah. It went from like 10 hours to 30 hours, right? It went from 8 to 27 hours of content. Yeah. And it'll be over 30 once we add the final stuff. Oh, like I didn't even know you could talk that long about publishing, <laughs> but uh, no stone, th- no stone will be unturned in publishing. That's exactly, exactly. The, exactly. So now business. we've set the foundation to like, um, like it's so good that it never has to be touched, never has to be changed, and there is zero competition. Like it, it's so good that no one can even dream about trying to beat it. Mm-hmm. Because we were two people that did it in six months. Like, it, if you even want to try, you have to spend a year, a whole year, this. and a year from now, we're fucking ten thousand miles ahead. Also, of you. you're working on this course every day. You're making zero money. Yeah. We're, I'm only making publishing royalties, so I'm yeah. living off of publishing. Oh, you royalties. turned off your course. We we kept it going, but yeah. it was neglected. Yeah, it I was I, neg- I didn't want. Uh, you didn't want to sell it. No, 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 I didn't want to sell it either. Yeah, it was the, for like bad, right? It's yeah, like, oh, man. It's like it so. was absolutely the best we could have at the time. Yeah, but yeah. so much changed, and we didn't realize like. What goes now? We we paid a lot of money for masterminds, mentorship, like and to learn from the best, mm-hmm. um, and that's where we learned how to actually up your course game. Mm-hmm. It's and crazy, man. It's like it's 
like when you first start off in business, you're just trying to survive. Yeah. Because especially if you're coming from nothing, if you are also proving people wrong, like you really want that immediate instant gratification now. But it's like the more you realize it's not even about us, it's about the people that you're serving. That's when business hits that Jacob, right? I'm very grateful for that. I um, a lot of people can say I feel this way, I feel that way, but I genuinely have a feeling of like I serving other people is actually more important. I yeah. genuinely feel that way. So when I uh, when someone gets into publishing with our guidance, I'm just like, yes, I'm so happy for you because mm-hmm. I know what this can do for you. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, dude, and you guys also do so much in terms like. So yeah, the product needs to be the best for you to actually sell it like crazy, the Wi-Fi, the masses to do the impact that you want. But the product isn't necessarily the thing that people give you money for. It's like their entire experience leading up to that. Oh yeah. And like I said, looking at some of your videos, you guys have some of the best videos, actually the best videos when it comes to ebook publishing. And I'm not saying this, like there's no affiliate link. Like I'm literally just like bringing these guys on this channel because they're just generally homies and amazing human beings. Um, but if I was ever gonna get started in publishing, I would literally go to you guys. And that's literally how I have this mm-hmm. ebook right here, or this uh, audiobook right here, is this wouldn't have happened, this extra stream of income wouldn't have happened because you guys, and most people that would get you guys on or other people, they would just maybe want it because they see like the financial opportunity of doing like thing. I, yeah. I honestly don't want like any affiliate commission from anything because I just generally appreciate you guys as human beings to reach out and to help me out with like my book mm-hmm. right and that's why like whenever whenever I go to masterminds whenever I go to anything and people like have a book problem even like when Gavin and I like the first name that would come up is like oh you got to meet these guys oh yeah yeah, yeah cuz it literally is because you guys are stemming from a place of heart of giving value of really serving someone and just knowing that your like benefit will come in like later on but I mean, for example, how has your life changed when you were just giving value? I mean, you know, you went from lone, broke in New Jersey to traveling around the world with like the love of your life, doing amazing things with your best friends, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And all this stems from you were saying before, scarcity versus abundance. So yeah. we're by no means millionaires or rich as fuck, but we're fine. But I feel extreme amounts of financial abundance. So I'm never trying to make money. I'm never out trying to make money, take money from anyone. But like how would I don't millions of to. dollars change your life? Like for you specifically? Like what, would you do anything different? It wouldn't change you much. You still lived in villas. You still are surrounded by amazing people. It, it would not change much. Yeah, like more money won't necessarily do anything. If anything, Only, it's just like, if anything I would just like pay Dane more and yeah. things like that. Yeah. And pay for all his shit. Yeah. Uh, otherwise like... Uh, the villa we had in Bali, did you? Yeah, is there one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The villa. We were playing. I don't songs. need anything bit bigger or better than that. Yeah. What I realized is like, like I don't even want to spend that much money on it. But then villa. we went to creation. We're like, man, I feel like yeah, yeah, no, yeah, now I'm like, okay, I feel like <laughs> we, <laughs> we, fucking missed that we're we got this zebra painting. That's yeah. it. We're five people in a tiny place. So I'm like, okay, a bit more space. For <laughs> dude, we got lights. Dude, we got lights, yeah. dude. Yeah, but yeah, like one million dollars. Like you're saying, it's really not about the money. Yeah, I want I want to give it to like every give it or use it on everyone I love in my family, and then just as security, security, mm-hmm. and then whenever you need it, I'm you the have type it, of guy, no stress. I'm t- I'm the type of guy with my money. All I do is stack in my bank account. Yeah, I don't yeah. spend it. Yeah. I, I just like having a fat bank account. Yeah. I think the re- the only thing that changed for me when I had like excess amounts of money in my bank account compared to like when I didn't, mm-hmm. like seriously, and this is the only thing that changed was I was like, man, I was just like buy dinners for everyone that was like yeah, the yeah, only yeah, shit yeah, i was yeah. like man i got money like i was like well i'm in bali i can't mm-hmm. buy nice cars like my place is already lavish like i'm surrounded by amazing people that actually care about me not just for my success but most people actually don't even know what i do mm-hmm. so what can i do i was just like i'll buy dinners that was the only thing that changed right like just buy dinners you are the world's biggest minimalist yeah, yeah like you, you ride around so on the much. shittiest bikes you have the shittiest laptop maybe i'm yeah. actually poor yeah. 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 Like you, you seem kind of poor this place is tiny i mean yeah we spent way more on a villa we got like the pimped out uh yeah. motorbikes we got the brand new laptops you don't have any of that dude yeah. i and i'm low-key with my finances even yeah, yeah, yeah well i well i think the biggest thing that changed for me was i i lived the excess amount like i lived in vegas for 30 days and then i was like surrounded by tables, like people spending like ten grand in a single night. I, I I went like you guys and how you guys are obsessive in one thing. I'm obsessive on extremes. Like I'll go vegan for thirty days and then carnivore for thirty days. <laughs> that's um, sick. That's, that's sick. That is but dope. 
it's also unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also just like out here either, like just mm-hmm. freaking weird. Um, but in terms of the minimalism, I think it's like what you guys like, dude, I remember when I was in college and I had nothing. And I remember when I made money from like eBay drop shipping, I thought like what would make me happy was if I bought like this Michael Kors watch, mm-hmm. right? I was like, oh, if I buy this gold. And I was like showing everyone, I was like, guys, I think I'm gonna get this watch. Yeah. Everyone's like, why are you fucking shit? Like, remember, I'd be like in a lunch table, I'm like, yo, yeah, like, yo, 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 which, which, which watch should I buy? Guys? And I remember, and this is a crazy thing why I don't like say anything about what I do is like, uh, someone told me that the most proudest thing that you have in your life, that's the last thing that you ever show. Mm-hmm. And then that's what real confidence is mm-hmm. to have everything that you're proud of and you realize that people love you because of not the things that you're proud of, but just because who you are. Mm-hmm. Like seriously, try for asking that. Like for example, success, business, YouTube. When people first meet me, they have no idea who I am mm-hmm. for like the first three months. Mm-hmm. Like even some of our close friends in Bali, like for example, Simone, like a lot of you guys thought I was dating. We're just like friends. Uh, she still has no idea what I do. <laughs> She's like, what do you do? Like, I was like, uh, Mar- I literally say like marketing company and mm-hmm. like, oh, stuff, stuff like that. Seriously, if, you, if you don't want anyone to know what you're doing, just say marketing company. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, be, being here in Mind Valley, like you're networking, people t- tell about like what they do. It's so awkward for me to say like, hey, you do YouTube videos. Like, I, I don't say that kind of stuff. Like, I'll keep it short. Yeah, but I, I publish like, books and I, and I teach others how to do it. And then I stop That's there. basically the tag. Yeah. Right? But podcasts sound sick. Like, oh, we do podcasts. I feel like we do podcasts. podcasts. Now. Well, we do squadcasts. That's squadcasts. Squadcasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is We're going to do a lot of these, man. I really think we're going to have you guys on and then other people on and then we'll we, do one where there's like 15 of us. Oh, it's going to be nuts. Yeah. And this is just one topic. We just talk about like a bit of our timeline. We got halfway through. We got time. halfway through. Yeah, there's still there's, there's a lot more to say. Yeah, maybe there's gonna be a part two. Yeah. I think the part two be like your love story, man. Because oh, that'll that'll be that'll separate, be amazing. That'll be a one. There's a Literally, lot I there. brought there was a girl that was about to leave back to Netherlands or Germany in August, and then she sat down, and I was gonna say hi to her, but I was too afraid because like I was after the long period of just like social anxiety. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, frick, like literally me, Gavin, and Ario was just like us. And there was no, like, we just wanted a friend that was a girl. We didn't uh-huh. want someone to date. We were just like, we just want a girl as a friend. Uh-huh. And we weren't going to say hi to her. And this is Laura. This is Laura. Oh we said God. hi to her. She was going to leave within, like, three weeks. She was going to go back home, dude. I don't know if you understand that. She was literally going to go home. And then Gavin, me, and Ari were like, no, you should stay. We'll teach you how to make money online. Right? And then she stayed. She's publishing now. She's <laughs> publishing, dude. Thank you so much for saying hi to her. <laughs> yeah, I literally almost and it changed the direction of my life. Because serious, yeah. If you guys get married, I get the firstborn. So, um, <laughs> are you? We get into that later. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's insane how like the smallest decisions change everything. Mm-hmm. It's actually crazy looking back, man. Mm-hmm. Shall we end it on that? Yeah. Oh, what? You're the host. You're the host. Yeah. I think Joe Rogan's just like he just says thank you, and then yeah. it's just like I don't know the Joe Rogan. Well, you gotta end on a high when things are okay. Bye. Okay, okay bye. And then it ends. Oh, 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 oh,